Welcome to Two Cents, the Dollar Views knockoff version of Last Week Tonight, where we try to recap everything that's happened this past week of note and also just shoot the shit. So once again, it's your yep. brain trust, Brian. I'm here with Steve. I'm really glad that you reminded me that I got to check out Last Week Tonight yep. right after this. Actually, I watched the last episode uh, last night. Really good. The the main story on food, like probably one of the best ones they've had in a long time because it wasn't like, oh, FIFA or something. Like, it's something that everyone should care about because I'm one of those people when I go out or even if I'm at someone's house, if they don't finish their food, I finish it for them because the concept of throwing food away is something that I, I just can't do. Yeah, no, like, I, I especially, having worked with food before, you know, I would hate letting that stuff go to waste, it's, um, you know, especially just, like, the way that they have you put that stuff out and waste, it just feels like... It's suppressing. Yeah. But they they go into the politics on it, uh, 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 John Oliver, like, he talks about, like, oh, if you give expired food or bad food to someone, you can get sued, but like they break it down like that actually isn't true. It's something about the Good Samaritan. That I don't know. Everyone should watch it. As you know, uh, a couple of days after their episodes air, they put the main story on YouTube, so you can go and find that. It's kind of related to that. You know, I work in a movie theater. You've worked in a movie theater. I don't know how it was at your chain, but they make us throw away all the popcorn and hot dogs or whatever, any food that we've made. We have to throw away. We don't donate it. We trash it. Well, I think you work you work at a multiplex, so yeah. you had a lot more stuff prepared than I did. We would just have to toss out some of the popcorn. It wasn't really that much, and the popcorn was shit anyway, so no one really felt that bad. And usually people uh-huh. were pretty well prepared so that you know they would have it run out near the end of the night so that you wouldn't have to throw that yeah, much away. Yeah, I try to do that, but the hot dogs, I've seen as many as like 10 Perfectly fine hot dogs that sell for like four fifty a piece. It's ridiculous. I and we're not allowed to eat them. Yeah, no. I mean, you you pre make that stuff, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, yeah, you see, know, it's just like seven eleven. We didn't have to. We would have to make it. Yeah, we would have to make it if people ordered it. Okay. Well, we're a little bit off topic. <laughs> yeah, either way, hey, still, you know, don't waste food. Yeah, don't do, yeah. don't do it. Don't yeah, do that's it. the moral of it. As with anything with last week tonight, you keep learning something new yeah. that more people should be aware of. This is kind of related. I'm also up to date on True Detective. Well, not necessarily now because I haven't seen the one tonight. Um, and so because of that, I haven't checked Twitter over the last couple of hours just because the trades make a point of anytime there's an HBO show of basically spoiling the end of the episode. So a couple episodes back, they're like, oh, the big shootout that Rachel McAdams barfed on. Uh, behind the scenes, or last last week, it was oh they do a time jump. I was like I'm not even gonna let them try to ruin it, especially since everyone's already kind of saying that this uh, this season's shit anyway, um, which I don't 100 percent agree with. Th- this season's not nearly as amazing as last was, but then again, it couldn't have been anyway. Uh, it's just very it's very different, and it's not as much of a mystery, or maybe it's a slow burn because it seems like tonight's episode is gonna be really good. Uh, based on the last two, but who knows? It could just be another shit show. I really don't know if I want to dig into it. Just uh, I, I'll, I'll let you know once it ends. Yeah, no, I'm, sh- you know I'm sure. Like, because I mean, I did find the payoff for the mystery very underwhelming in the first season, and that's really. I mean, all the first season had was uh, really great characters. That doesn't sound like much of a complaint. I know, but yeah, yeah, and yeah, some impressive stuff. But it just didn't make that big of an impression on me. Like when all was said and done, I, I just the, didn't feel it was worth it for me. I really liked the dual narratives. Well, not even dual narratives, but the, the dual timelines. I thought that was really interesting, especially on the first episode that re- that reveal. We're like, you know, you're in the room, and then you find out it's kind of you know it's not the same time period because you don't really know. So I, I thought that was the main draw. But yeah, I, I agree with you that there wasn't necessarily a, a big mystery involved, um, which is kind of connected to. What I want to talk about, I you know, I haven't really done anything outside of what we re- reviewed. You know, like I said, I caught up on last week's night and True Detective, um, but I just got home from watching Paper Towns, which is a mystery. Uh, yeah, I want to hear more about that. You should. I think you should watch it. It's really good. It's, you think yeah, so? Yeah, it was really. I haven't seen Fallen Our Stars, but now I want to. Um, before the film, John Green, the author of both books, he did one of his. Thanks to you for coming, and he seemed really enthusiastic. They cut it really bad. Like there was some um, whatever that that's neither here nor there, um, but he seemed like a really good guy. And like the story, 
I don't know, I just really liked the movie. It was a coming of age road trip mystery. Like it, it was really, it was done really well. There's a really good message there. It's about uh, demystifying the people you know and kind of appreciating every moment as a miracle, but not as preachy as I just made it sound. Um, yeah, see, that's and that's my fear of it going in. Just it seemed way, I don't know, way too on the nose, just based on the marketing. Mm-hmm. Like, and I I understand that you know that's trailers are trailers and that's going to be different yeah. from the movie. And yeah, I might check it out i might rent it if i have time uh i tell you you'll watch it with your movie pass like i I thought it was that good i'm gonna write a really good review for it yeah definitely one of the best films i've seen in a while in theaters surprisingly Um, i'll make it i'll make a note i got i know i gotta catch up on spy mm -hmm. and uh love and mercy and there's a whole bunch of other stuff i gotta check out this isn't as good as spy but if i was in high school i would have loved this movie probably um but yeah i just i really liked it especially the the final like 10 minutes or so it ended really strong um but yeah pretty pretty good high school movie now anything else you check out this week no i mean just you know that i haven't even been playing video games that much um i did start reading i I read this really interesting new york times article that i've been saving for a while it's kind of related to the screenplay i'm writing it's about uh like the height of webcamming in the early 2000s and this kid, what's his name, Justin, I don't remember his last name, he had like a website, basically he was being taken advantage of by elderly, not elderly men, but adults when he was a kid, like it was like live pedophilia or like chill, child porn, it's it's hard to really describe, I can link you to the article, really interesting read, surprise it's something you know that hasn't become like a lifetime movie or like a straight up film, uh, because it, it even now it, it, it's really bizarre and kind of strange how the internet kind of made child porn and access to it really bloom and I'm sure it's not nearly where it was uh, then but like it goes into depth it's like well he signed up for Earthlink because they provided you a free webcam I remember this I remember my family getting Earthlink and us getting the webcam and it was you know really shitty quality but it was like oh yeah we can you know we can cyber talk to our grandfather without just typing and I'm thinking, I was like, was I just so naive that I never thought that I could have been making so much money with my shirt off in front of a camera? I don't know. All right. Let me ask you this, though, just because I, I haven't gotten much out of you for the script that you're writing. I, mm-hmm. I've sort of gotten hints from, uh, I can't remember what movie uh, you watched on Letterboxd that you briefly reviewed and mentioned that you were doing it as research for yeah. that. But so, I don't know if I'm, let me, let me know if I'm far off here. Am I... Am I understanding this right, that this is sort of like something kind of like unfriended in the way that you like you're recording it through Skype and it's kind of a before sunrise version of that? No, it's very far off. That might be good, though. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I, it's not it's not close to that. I don't want to get too many details out of you if you want to. Keep yeah, it no. Yeah, but, I, yeah. Um, I I've told very little people about it. Basically, this is, I'm not going to go deep into it, but it's uh, clerks meets the girl next door with the Internet of Things angle. That'd be the log line. Um. Yeah, I I've been keeping it kind of under wraps. I've I've written about forty pages, so you know I'm almost halfway done. I'm shooting for about a hundred. I want it to be like an hour and forty minutes or so. Um, yeah, hopefully I I write more. I I hope it I finish it in the next month or two. Really, that soon? I I hope. Well, not finish it, finish it, but the first draft. Hey, well, do what you got. If you want to skip out on some screenings to write, man, don't let me stop you. Yeah, I, I it's hard for me to find the time. Like I has, to, I have to. I'm very particular about my writing conditions. It has to be silent. It has to be nice weather. I have to have nothing on my mind. I have to not be hungry. I have to have snacks. I have to, yeah. It, like I, I have to be alone. You know so. what? Let me ask you this: just how your writing process works? Like, are you writing it like from the beginning? Like, is this like forty pages that are like supposed to be the um, first forty minutes of your movie, or like, are you trying yeah. to do it all in order? Yeah, I'm. I'm writing it chronologically. Yeah, see, um, I got a completely different process, but how's that working out for you, though? It's good. I mean, I I hit a roadblock a couple of months ago, and I finally wrote the scene now. And it was only because I, like, restructured one of the characters who had no on-screen time, and now she has, like, a bit part. I'm trying to expand her. Um, but, yeah, I, it, it was definitely a journey just kind of coming up with the concept and then 
I kind of just winged it, and then I got to a point where I just wrote down everything. I had, like, a very broad outline for the entire story, and then when I hit the roadblock, I wrote out, in it, like, a very in-depth breakdown of the whole second act. Um, so I'm going to follow that, those guidelines, that arc, until I get to the end of it, and then I'm pretty sure the third act is going to write itself, because I'll know the world and the characters so well by then. Um, but, like, I, I have the tone and I have the voice... Yeah, no, this is, it, like, I, like I said, I've, I've sent it to, like, one person, and he didn't exactly give me the feedback I wanted. He was like, it's not funny enough, but, um, but I, uh, yeah, I just, it kind of scared me. I was like, well, I'm not going to send it to anyone else until it's done. What about you? What have you been, uh, watching this week besides what, or ingesting, I guess, is the term we use? <laughs> watching ingesting I don't, you think we sound too impre- uh, pretentious if we say ingesting no because uh, why I say that is because it's a better term than saying watch listen to played read like as a catch all for any time of media consumption no I mean yeah it, it works it's uh, I, I, I don't know I'm just being stupid anyways what have I been ingesting uh, I, I saw quite a few things over the week I saw a couple of Criterion titles uh, I finally saw Hoop Dreams actually nice yeah. which I I've been uh, people have been trying to get me to check out for a long time, and you yeah, know I I did write a little works. review on Letterboxd about it. I feel I like we haven't come across this yet where a documentary has been coming out and we've decided to review it. But I just I don't feel like I can review documentaries at all. It's a hard thing to do. It's definitely like it. something that I don't think we could do on our podcast, as it's a very personal film. Uh, it's not I wouldn't even say genre, but uh, film type. Like, I, we couldn't, I, it would be very hard for us to do one for, like, Citizen Four or the Scientology one, just because... Yeah, you, no, I mean, you can't, uh-huh. you can't talk about Citizen Four without talking about, like, you know, it, it'd be basically a, a discussion on politics and, you know, on ethics and all that. It wouldn't be a talk, discussion about the movie itself and how that's put together. But, I mean, you know, as, I guess as far as, what's interesting about Hoop Dreams, though, is, like, it it really does work like as a single narrative, like over, I think it takes place over the course of what, four or five years. Yeah. It's like four and a half years. Yeah. I mean, it's, well, if you count the, the, the epilogue, then it's closer to like six. I don't know. I think but the yeah. closest experience I can, uh, just kind of, Boyhood. yeah. <laughs> as far as just time going by and seeing how they grow up and how they change over time, you know, they're like these young, eighth grade kids at first and you know they're very very optimistic about oh i'm gonna play in the nba and yet as they grow up and they get more and more talented and you know it seems like yeah they have the potential to do it but then there's a bit more of you know there's some cynicism there and yet there's there's the bullshit that you have to deal with through life and then they just kind of seem like they're burnt out on it and then at the end you know even one of them says you know even if I don't make it, you know, I'm fine. Cause there's other, I, you know, I got family, there's yeah. other stuff I can do. And I mean, that's in a way like that's, it's really kind of a great movie just about growing up a great slice of just what I guess, uh, high school is like, you know, and just figuring out what your place in the world's going to be after that. But then also there's, I, I guess what I mean is like, you know, it has a lot to say about, you know, American social class and all that. And obviously mm-hmm. they're in a different situation that I can't relate to, but just the way, you know, growing up through high school and like, you know, how your state of mind kind of changes that I do think is, it's universally relatable in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't know about you. Yeah. I, I actually, I've seen it twice and I saw it both times in like a three day span. I wrote a paper on it for one of Mosher's class my title was Getting Shot in the Hood by a Different Weapon, Hoop Dreams in the Participatory Mode. Go it's on, a, it's a go breakdown. On. Yeah, it's, a, it's a breakdown of uh, the, the documentary mode that's used in the film where it's kind of like from a distance. There's no talking heads or anything. It's just whatever happens, happens. Um, and, like, I, you know, I get into, like, analysis of how uh, the filmmakers, that, there's that scene where the lights go off in the house. And it's like, how fucked up do you have to be to continue shooting your film in those kind of conditions? Like, don't you reach out? I don't know. I really enjoy writing the paper. And I think it's it's a landmark documentary film, which most people do. And, you know, it's a landmark film about basketball. It's uh, interesting. Uh, remind me of the name of the, the director. Or I think there was two, actually, right? Yeah, I know, uh, I know that the... 
I'm blanking on the guy's name, but I know it's the same guy that did Life Itself. Yeah, I was gonna, I was going to bring that up. He did Life Itself. Uh, Steve James. Uh, he also did um, this film called No Crossover: The Trial of Alan Iverson. It's a thirty for thirty doc by ESPN. It should be on Netflix still. Really interesting um, story, and all three of the films are kind of well, not not the Alan Iverson one, but they're all about uh, a lot of his films are about Chicago or Illinois. Uh, what I've seen of his work, really, really good stuff. Yeah, I know that uh, somewhere out there, there's uh, there's like a ten years later short documentary on uh, oh, where, where these guys are. But I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I like researched to, I like where they are. It, yeah, I can tell you. Like, I can open up my doc, my paper, and I know one. <laughs> if of I them, can see the documentary, um, actually, I'd rather see that. But yeah, yeah, I I know one of them did like a uh, after school basketball type thing. Or, you know, like a YMCA type thing. I don't know. Just one of those, yeah, like, coaching my, groups for kids and stuff. It's like, I'll, I'll put my paper to good use and link it to this podcast. It's not even that long that now that I look at it. It's probably, like, 1,500 words or a little bit lot, a little bit more than that. And I remember when that used to seem like a lot of words. Right? And it's yeah. like, well, I've written film reviews as a pastime that rival that length. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot easier, though, when you care about the subject and you're not being forced to write it with a deadline. So um, this week, there's been a lot that's happened, some of it bad, uh, most notably, obviously, the, the shooting in Lafayette, Louisiana, during the train wreck screening, which, all being all things considered, even though it's tragic, it, we, we got lucky that not only did only two people get killed, which isn't that just horrible to say, but it's true, but also that the, the gunman was a coward enough to kill himself, so we didn't have to jump through hoops and see if he'd get by and just have life in prison. Because that's what happened with, uh, what's his name? I don't even want to say his name. Cause the I, guy you know, for Aurora? His... Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, this I don't is, want to say his name know, on this purpose. This is a much, much deeper conversation. I don't really want to get into, like, it's, I don't know. It It's really terrible that you're kind of saying, like, you're starting this off by saying, you know, oh, that's not as bad and it could have been worse. It's just... It's true, though. I mean, that's where we are in this world. I know, which is scary. That this just seems like a normalized thing, like, and it's been happening more and more often. And really, I mean, that's terrible. I, I mean, I really can't say much more than that. that and then that brings up the whole conflict of gun control, which I really don't, don't want to get, get into, into on that. here. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just surprised. I, I mentioned to it, like, set, you know, came up and not conversation, but I was like, oh, did you hear what happened at work? To a couple, not guests, obviously. Uh, a couple of my um, coworkers, and it was like, oh yeah, that sucks. And you know, like I said, the same thing. Like it could have been a lot worse, which is true. Like, we haven't had one in a theater in a while. Um, but I was surprised how many customers were coming to see Trainwreck anyway. Like either they were oblivious or they didn't care. Um, I I don't know if I was expecting them to be scared, but I was thinking that the box office numbers would drop. Like, I I think I would you know, kind of stay away from a theater for a little longer after something like this happened? Or is that just how numb we are to these type of events now? I don't know. I mean, maybe. I remember right after Aurora happened, I saw Dark Knight Rises, like, the next day, that morning, actually, and I found out about it, like, probably 30 minutes before the movie started, and it just, I felt a little bit uneasy. And then there, I remember that they took out the trailer. They said that Warner Brothers pulled the trailers for Gangster Squad, and my theater hadn't even done that yet. So I was definitely thinking that when they showed so the shooting. So you saw someone get shot on up screen. In yeah, a movie yeah, theater. and I just thought, like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, they better take that down soon. What the hell's that? And they, they ended up taking that scene out of the film. Yeah, the which, final cut. you know, whether, whether that's which a shame a, or not, yeah. I don't know, because I didn't really get much enjoyment out of Gangster Squad, but I mean, that would have been a pretty awesome scenario for that movie. F- fictionally speaking, yeah. it could have been cool. Could've, yeah. yeah, it could have helped that film because it needed some help. Uh, you know, that's a, a bad Ryan Gosling movie, and he has a couple of them. Uh, one that didn't come to be was his Logan's Run remake, which it looks like is happening again, maybe? I have is not it? heard I don't know. anything they, on they it. Make s- you, you didn't read about this? Yeah, so apparently it's back in development, and they might have a new director. I don't know. I, I, I just, with how hot dystopian fiction is, especially young adult stuff, it makes sense that it would be a good time to, to make it. Um, but I think it's just one of the, number one, have you seen the original? I have, actually, a while ago. Okay, I don't so remember yeah, it, it that Okay, so yeah, it's well, a pretty, but... 
pretty interesting story, but it's not that good of a film. And I don't. I think they should just scrap it at this point. I mean, it be, like, as far as a remake, could it be cool? You, you know, it's the I case think so. of whether, yeah, concept. whether it's in the right hands. But if it's just being hashed out, if it's one of those things like the Total Recall remake where it's brand recognition, and I mean, it's it's really weird. Uh, I don't know my attitude my attitude towards sequels and remakes. It's, I mean. I don't. I've said this before. the The end result, as long as it's good, then no one's going to care. And if it's bad, then you know, of course, people are going to be cynical about it and go like, "Oh, you know, they're just doing this to make money." And da da da. And yeah, you know. Well, doing it to make money is what Hollywood's about. I mean, look at yeah. Jurassic World two coming out. Was it June twenty second, twenty eighteen? Please, please. I know that they're not going to do it, but if they do it, please just send those raptors out and like. I, I don't know. Do some what we roar said during the review. I would see that movie. I want to see the Raptors with lightsabers and like moon boots, jumping fifty feet in the air and like doing moonwalks. I want it. I want them to push it to like as camp. I want a Sharknado type film. May as well just go all the way. I because mean, fuck it. We already know what's gonna happen. They're gonna open. It's gonna be one of two scenarios. They're gonna open another amusement park and something bad's gonna happen again like always or you're gonna have the in-gen raptors in the battlefield fucking shit up and i don't know about you but that sounds like a much better scenario maybe they'll do both maybe they have to send in the train raptors to fight the dinosaurs again yeah who knows i think we need a fast and furious and jurassic park spinoff that would be good i think yeah do you know i think they need to bring jason statham back riding a raptor i could see that no no i mean they didn't they didn't kill him for a reason, you yep. know? Like, he's still yeah, alive at the end know. of it. Could happen. Maybe he gets reincarn- his brother gets reincarnated as a T-Rex and so does uh, <laughs> Paul Walker. <laughs> oh, man, no, no, don't do that. Why not? Don't, it's don't like, once you remake and reboot and make sequels to a reboot of adaptation, like, what's the worst that could happen? Well, my issue, well, don't revive a dead person. Just, <laughs> just don't do that. I mean, you know, that'd be pretty... Yeah, just don't. And that's all I have to say there. Speaking of dead people, James Horner. So we mentioned this during uh, Southpaw. You know, he got that in memory because he did the score, which in your letterbox review you basically said it wasn't that good, and it definitely wasn't. Um, But apparently he wrote either the whole thing or pieces to Antoine Foucault's Magnificent Seven. Apparently they already, I don't think they just wrote, I think they already recorded it. Wow. That's yeah, which is crazy. Just and that, uh, with, that film has a good cast, so yeah, with only the stuff crossed. on the page. So, I I really I'm curious how that's gonna work. If that'll uh, basically if they, I, I guess they're gonna use the score now. I mean, it's not like they can't mm-hmm. do it, right? Yeah, they they kind of have to in respect. I just I'm concerned because they have two other posse westerns coming out soon. Uh, by the time that one arrives, people might not care. So obviously you got the Hateful Eight coming out this December. Then you have Adam Sandler's what's it called? The Netflix film. The, I are we uh, ridiculous seven or what, whatever it is. I don't know. You I know, mean, how, how's it, that working it, too? Is that just going straight to Netflix or are they gonna? Do yeah, it's part of run? it's part of his deal. It was gonna be, uh, I believe it was supposed to be Sony. It was someone. It was gonna be a studio, and and it's part of his like four picture deal with Netflix, which is a good thing for him because. You know, he like, has a job. I think his film, yeah, I think his films work better in an at-home setting, at least if they continue on this path that they're going. Yeah, yeah. After Pixels, it's just I don't really care. I have not been really seeing any news about his uh, the movies on his Netflix deal. Yeah, so. I, I, I just know this one. Now, you know what's funny about Pixels? Did you hear about this? That uh, they made changes specifically to please the, yeah, the Chinese the government. Yeah, the Chinese censors. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that during the credits, there was a Chinese company. Yeah, the that China was a producer. Uh, what is it like? China Film Company, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, something like They're that. They're the ones that, I, which basically means I think it's that's the entire nation. Um, yeah. That's involved. In that. I think I they, don't know how that they works, did something but. similar for Age of Extinction, I believe. Yeah, I think uh, Marvel's worked with them before for I think Iron Man three yeah. and I, Avengers. I think yeah. it might have been Avengers. They they usually put a Chinese actor in a film to entice their audience, which you know obviously happened Transformers, um, Furious Seven. They, yeah, I, yeah, Furious Seven. Like they they do that, and it makes sense. Like the Koreans do it too. That that was what happened in Terminator, I believe, because I think they were co-financiers on that. 
It was the the T one thousand. Yeah, I think um, we are getting it to a point where they're. I don't know if their uh, if their film economy hasn't surpassed ours already. It's gonna. It's getting there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about how many well respected South Korean films are out there. Uh, obviously, Chan Wook Park stuff, and then you you got um, Bong Joon Ho. Yeah, a couple of people. So it's not it's not like they're no one anymore. So, I mean, I, I obviously know a lot less about Chinese uh, cinema, but. But who knows? I mean, look at look at Bollywood. That film this year, I, I can't I don't remember the title of it. Some called my theater asking if we had it. It was like the the highest grossing Bollywood film in of all. No, not highest grossing, uh, highest budget. So yeah, I knows? still have yet to be exposed to Bollywood cinema. But I yeah, I do really want to. I do want to check it out. Yeah, there, it's not a. I don't think there's a lot out there though, as far as. Uh, well, no, there's a lot. They make what's a ton easy of films for me to. What's easy for me to reach though? Like, is there anything on Amazon no. Instant or Netflix? I, I, that's good? I doubt it. I, I don't know if you know how. If Bollywood anyone works. is listening to this right now and you have good recommendations that you know are on Netflix or on Amazon Instant or any streaming platform in the United States, please email them to us. Send them out on Twitter or something because I'd love to see more of this stuff. I don't know if you know how Bollywood films work, but it's not like it's one genre. It's not like, oh, it's a Western. Every Bollywood film basically is a romance. It's a dance movie. It's a musical. It's a comedy. It's a drama. And they're all like three and a half hours long. Like, it's something, it's weird like that. It's, um, it, it, like uh, a friend of mine, his family's Indian. Basically, the concept is you're going to use, you're going to spend your money on this film. It's going to be everything you want and more since you're paying for it. Uh, that sounds really interesting to me, man. I really want to see right? how that works. Uh, that's kind of like the the forties films. I mean, at the same like... time, though, I, that, that doesn't sound like something that's. I don't know. Maybe that might be exclusively Bollywood, but I mean, I've from the way I'm hearing it, other than the runtime, you know, part of that sounds like Slumdog Millionaire to me. You know, it's a bunch of different genres thrown into one, I mean, that, and it that's works. what Slumdog was supposed yeah. to try to do. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it, aside it, from it wasn't. The runtime. Yeah, I obviously didn't really do the dancing. I ex- you know, besides the the closing sequence, which was great, I love that part of the movie. Yeah, um, and, and also, yeah, I need to rewatch that movie. I love that movie. Oh, it's a great movie. I watched it uh, about a year ago. I rewatched it. It's still great. Just the way it's shot, all of the the kids in the film, the the whole cast. I love Dev Patel. I I really. It sucks that you know he did Airbender. That kind of fucked up his career. Yeah, and he was actually he really, really good in that too. Right? Oh, oh. He was. He was, I mean, really he was one of the better the parts room. of it. Yeah. Everything I've seen him in, you know, he's, he's been good in. So I, I hope his career continues to go. I'm happy Frida Patel, not Frida Patel, uh, Frida, Frida Pinto. Pinto, I'm, I'm happy her career died because all she did was look good. She wasn't a good actress. It was like Jess Rise of Planet of the Apes. That was it. That was hey, it. Hey, well, she was good in Slumdog. I mean, no arguments. Well, yeah, well, it, it's hard not to be. Hey, she could still do good stuff. You never know, man. You never know. I read this really interesting on the Verge, uh, article on The Verge. Basically, there's studios out there. The, the the thing that they had was a French uh, thing. I think it might have been 20th Century Fox. Basically, studios are reporting their own servers for piracy. That's how stupid they are. Like They are reporting to the feds, whoever, in whatever country, that their film has been leaked and is being spread across torrents, and they are too idiotic to realize that that's actually their own building. Um, it reminded me of uh, a couple years ago. I don't know if you remember reading this. There was a Fox News film critic who reviewed a leaked copy of the Wolverine Origins film. I remember that. With, like, the pre still in it, and he got fired. Like, I, I don't know if it was worse, that he would even review the film before it came out or that they would fire not him only did he when did, he already worked for the studio. Not only did he do that, I remember reading that review, and I remember the way that it ended, and he said... Uh, so he re- just referred to it was like it was bad yeah no, i mean he he criticized the movie but he also said, like was very pro piracy <laughs> the way that he ended it wow. and he said yeah, I, well, I think he was just he gonna fired, watch something man. along the lines of like i love you man or observe import whatever was that at that time and he said he would watch those at home on his computer because it beats drive into the theater Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I, I forgot I mean, that it was, part. And I don't even know if this guy was a film critic or what. I don't know. But. I think he was, or he was a blogger that worked for Fox. As like, I remember, is a pretty. Big I don't deal. know. I guess he just assumed that he would be safe. I, I, I guess he thought he would be safe just because he was writing it for his own company. But uh, nope. <laughs> well, he's yeah, he's stupid. exact opposite. 
Almost as stupid as The Rock having two adaptations greenlit right now. You know about this? Of what? First off, he has an R-rated Baywatch film that's coming out soon. They have a director now. And secondly, he has, he's going to be in that Rampage movie, which is a video game adaptation that Brad Payton is directing. So, for some fucking reason, they greenlit the two people behind San Andreas to make another movie and it's based on a video game franchise that hasn't existed since, like, the mid-90s. Well, some reason, I mean, it's not that surprising. San Andreas did well, so clearly they're established and they can keep work. I mean, obviously, I guess they worked well together and they'd like to continue doing that, so it's not are, that are shocking you familiar? Are you familiar with this uh, franchise, though, Rampage? Of Rampage? You know, yeah, like didn't Rampage Uve, World Tour. Didn't Uwe Boll already make that movie? No, 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 no. He, he couldn't get the budget for this. This is the concept for these games. You can play as one of three monsters. You can play as, like, a, a huge ape. You can play as, like, a huge lizard. And I can't remember what the third one is, like an alien, okay? Oh, no, it had to be a regular uh, animal, because I, I think the concept was, like, a, a scientist did some tests on them. They all got really big, and then you walk around, and you're playing them, and you destroy buildings. So based on just the tone alone of San Andreas, I don't see how they are going to make that work, especially when you play as the bad guys in these games. Was well, the keep Rock in mind, be in a mocap? Keep in mind, they also, they didn't just do San Andreas. Before that, they did Journey to the Center of the Earth 2. No, and that no, might no, be no, more in Journey line with what they... Journey 2. It's called Journey 2, colon, Center of the Earth. Hey, I didn't see that, but I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna like, you know, just hold them down to San Andreas and say do more like that. If they want to try something else, and they're getting the money to do it, obviously, then we'll see what they have to offer. What's there? And hopefully, I it'll apologize. be good. Book out of place. The first one was Journey to the Center Earth. The second one was Journey to Colon, the Mysterious Island. But yeah, you know, he has the charisma. He looks good with his shirt off. He's a funny guy. He has an audience, but I. You know, ba you saw the Hercules movie, right? I did. Bad comic book adaptation based off of Greek mythology. San Andreas wasn't good. I have really low expectations for the, his next two films. He also has this Central Intelligence, Intelligence movie coming out with, uh, oh man, what's his name from, um, he's in everything. Wedding Ringer, um, Ride Along. Kevin Hart? Kevin Hart, yeah. It's, it's Kevin Hart in The Rock. In a movie about, I don't know, I'm guessing the CIA. They can't be good. Uh, well, I guess we'll wait and see. Were, are there trailers for it already? Um, I think a trailer's coming out soon. I Like, they've had some stills on Twitter. I don't know, hey, we'll see. I mean, you know, The Rock's a very, he's very likable with uh, American audiences, at least. San Andreas did well. It did well Hercules, internationally, too. Yeah, and Hercules, I believe, broke even. Uh, so, hey, you know what, they're doing fine, and... Uh, I haven't been impressed with uh, what he's been doing lately, but hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully. I mean, I'm, I'm so crossed my fingers that he has a big role in Furious 8, so. Did you uh, see this thing? Or their Universal's courting Brie Larson for Skull Island now? Man, I, good for her if she gets it. Good for her, right? Seriously, it was, I, mean, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Trainwreck was Universal, so obviously that did well, so they want her to stay with the studio. I think she's still waiting on that breakout movie, and I hope she gets it. I mean, she's done. She's one of those actresses where everything I've seen her in, she's been great in. And it's just she's not a, a name yet. Like, no one, no one knows who she is because she was great in, um, obviously, Trainwreck, Scott Pilgrim, even though she's, like, barely in that. Um, and especially, you know, more recently, Short Term 12. Like she was... Which is what I was going to get to. Not enough people have seen that. And it, you know what's interesting? Like, uh, the director of that, he's teamed with Michael B. Jordan. That's Michael B. Jordan's next film. I heard about that. Yeah, so hopefully, since, you know, he's a really big rising star right now. He's in the Fantastic Four next month. Creed, a couple months after that. Um, girls love him. So maybe that's going to be one of those things where that movie does well, and then people see Short Term 12. Oh, yeah, Short Term 12 I hope like, that's what happens. definitely needs a bigger audience. but um, I, so I think it's still on Netflix. I, yeah, I hope it's still on yeah, Netflix. Yeah, no, it's out there. I think a lot of people can see it. If you have not seen Short Term 12, do yourself a favor and check it out because it's really, really good. Really original, very uh, dramatic coming of age. Well, not coming of age, but yeah, kind of coming of age story that just don't, you don't see in movies. 
kind of the closest I, I I've seen is something like um oh what's that movie with uh a girl interrupted it's kind of close but um oh man it's uh Ryan Gosling and like there's a couple half N- are you talking about half Nelson no not half half Nelson like he plays someone in a like a danger I don't know what comes to me doesn't matter does not matter. Uh, you should. You might be missing out on some good there. Maybe I'm think. I'm thinking of it. Maybe it wasn't Ryan Nelson. I, I I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna get my phone out. I'm gonna cheat. If I can find my phone. Why is that cheating? Honestly? It's fucking cheating, man. How how but, is that cheating? Now you have the internet in front of you. You're recording off Skype off your laptop. You have the internet at your disposal. How is that cheating when you're I using feel like the I'm, tools that you have in I'm front of you? I'm cheating my memory. I'm I mean, cheating like, myself. You know, then when you listen to talk shows on the radio, like, are disc jockeys cheating just because they have computers in front of them and they're looking up? And, I mean, this is what interviewers do. I think do so. They're getting, the paid a ton of, they're getting paid a ton of money to talk about things, and if they don't know exactly what they're talking about, then... Well, yeah, but they need the facts in front of them to know. recall them back specifically. It's not like you can know this stuff 100% of the time. I know everything. No, I don't... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Give me, give me a second. I'm, I'm gonna figure this out. Let's talk about something else. I'm trying to figure this out. God damn. All right. Uh, what, what is there to talk about right now? I'm on Twitter, looking at my Twitter stream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yes. there's literally nothing interesting on there. Did you? You know what? I think uh, today is Stanley Cooper's birthday. Yes, it is. Well, yeah. yeah. He's dead, but yeah, it's his birthday. Yeah, but is that something I weird mean, that people celebrate? Circle figures on their birthdays, even still, and they also celebrate them on the day they died. Yeah, well, we're still we're happy that he was born, and that's all that matters. It's sad yeah. that he died, but if he wasn't born, we never would have gotten a lot of great stuff like two thousand one, obviously, or Clockwork Orange, which I still call my favorite movie of all time. But it is a good thing he died because the only thing worse than AI is that he could have made that his last film instead of Eyes Wide Shit. Wow, dude. I like Eyes Wide Shut, and I like AI. Really? I do, yeah. Wow. Uh, like, I really, and I saw that, I remember seeing AI in theaters, like, I really liked it as a kid for different reasons than, actually, I don't think I've seen it, like, in about, like, maybe about ten years, but I really liked it back as a kid, so. Well, it is for kids, you know, it's Pinocchio about a robot. So. Yeah, it's, a, it's a darker version of Pinocchio, though, and that is one thing I was, as a kid, I was able to appreciate, is, like, you know, the not-so-happy ending here we go. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, the film that I was thinking of is Manic. It's with Zoe Deschanel and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Takes place in uh, like a mental institution for troubled youth. I mean, not exactly a uh, foster home, but uh, kind of similar uh, coming of age on the darker side of life. With JGL and Zoe Deschanel? Mm hmm. Yeah, you sure you're not talking about 500 Days of Summer? No. Definitely not. That's a bad joke. Not really a joke. I mean, like, that's <laughs> honestly what I was thinking. Like, is he naming the right people? <laughs> no, 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 right movie. It was a couple years before that. Uh, and it's similar to Short Term 12? A little bit. I mean, obviously, it's it doesn't have uh, the same kind of soul, and it's it's not as bright, um, and it's kind of in a delinquent place instead of whatever. I don't want to go too far into Short Term 12, because it, it definitely is one of those films where the less you know about it, the more the better it, uh, payoff it has. So uh, something a little lesser on the internet this week. Did you see uh, that Benicio Del Toro is rumored to be a role in Star Wars Episode Eight? He's going to be Dude. a villain, perhaps? Dude, fuck yeah. You don't have a problem with that, considering he's already a villain in a Disney space opera? Why would I have a problem with that? First off, like, is he really a villain in there? Kinda. I, d- I don't know. He, he's... At- uh, he just seems like he's kind of on the sideline trying to avoid conflict. He's, he's I think he's going to have a bigger role. role in a couple, I think in the next Guardian of the Galaxy or in the Infinity War. In one of the films, he's going to be something. You don't just get Benicio Del Toro for five minutes in a movie. If it happens, it kind of, you've seen the Patton Oswald Star Wars, Marvel mashup oh, movie yeah. universe thing from Parks and Rec, right? Yeah. If they cast him... That gives credence to his theory, his wish, his like boner, f- like dream, whatever you want to call it. Because I, I, mean, I, I think they need to do that. Because look, eventually, 
all of their stars are going to be gone. Chris Hemworth, uh, Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo, all all the big names are disappearing, and that's obviously why they're introducing more people like Black Panther and Daredevil and whatnot. And so, how great would it be if like their last hurrah crosses over to Star Wars? Honestly, I and I, Indiana Jones. I think the idea is funny as a joke. If it happens, then I will be. I might just honestly be convinced that I'm living in a movie you, or a TV like, show that is a full on satire. There's like of an, something. I don't There's know a what, timeline of where genres go, okay? I, I wish I had my notes in front of me. Basically, it's like they have different phases, okay? It's like the it starts off with them trying to build the rules, like the conventions of a genre, and then the audience knows the rules, and they're kind of happy. It's like the golden era, and then it gets kind of like into the Baroque phase where you start playing with the rules and how it works, and that's when you start being meta, like some like scream um, and kind of playing with the rules. And then it goes past that, and then it comes into, like, parody. Or it's like uh, Dead Men Wear Plaid or, um, like, Scary Movie, where it's past uh, self reality and it's full-on joke. And then you have, like, the next step where it's like, this isn't even a fucking movie. Where am I watching? Like, uh, like House, okay? And the Marvel movies are already at that second step right now. So eventually, it's not we're not going to be satisfied with oh it's a connected world and it looks good and it has this and oh like, it made a joke about Spider Man and he's not in the movie yet like it's gonna have to get to that place where we're still interested they have to break the rules it's not good enough that they're making them still. I mean honestly, like I I just don't understand that that might be the popular opinion there is that oh yeah this is something that should happen but I. For the life of me, I cannot understand why someone would want that. Because it's in a galaxy a far, far away a long time ago. You know, like, you could jump forward through time. They, you know, they could get into their fucking light speed and end up here on the planet. Who knows? It could be like Luke Skywalker's great, 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 great to the 10th power grandson. And I don't, I don't see them going past like I'm not talking five years from now I'm talking like 15 once they finish this trilogy and this wave of anthology films and the the whole cast of the current Avengers is no longer on contract I could see it happening there's just something that seems horribly horribly wrong for me to see there is something horribly wrong with that it just seems like there's some horribly wrong to see Star Wars and Han Star Star Lord not so uh-huh. Star Lord and, and Han Solo standing in the same frame, like th- that it's just basically doesn't. That already seems there, right though. when it's a guy that basically he's the type of guy that would geek out over standing next to Han Solo. That uh, it's, it just seems isn't it, it already bad enough wrong. that you can walk through a Disney park and be in like a Star Wars attraction, and then two minutes later be in a place where George Clooney just made a movie about? It's it's kind of the same thing. Keep on walking and see a wax sculpture of Indiana Jones. Well, yeah, but, I mean, that's that's a theme park. You can walk around wherever you please. This is well, a story being presented like... The concept I mean. of Disneyland is that you can live the fantasies of the films they made. So if you're trying to literally live it out, like, seeing it on screen is a step backwards. God, I don't know. I, you know, I, I might... Know. Uh, maybe I'm just lose in touch with all this stuff and I, I don't know it just doesn't sound like my type of thing I guess we're gonna fizzle out on comic book movies soon they've been I, so big if for we so haven't long. already I mean I've I've said there. this in the Ant-Man review like I feel the Marvel burnout already mm-hmm. like, well, I, mean, I mean that's why I, Ant-Man was a good thing and so yeah, like, I, the Galaxy. I enjoyed Ant-Man but like you know I, I'll probably ju- I, I'll just remember it as a good time I, it's not like it's uh, we've already reached the peak of where those movies are going to go, I think. And, like, uh, Civil War, I'm already, uh, yeah. you know, I hope it's good, but I kind of just eh. don't really that, care. That movie it. is 100% a setup for Infinity War and the introduction of Spider-Man. Those are the two things people care about. Yeah, I mean, just even when it comes to, like, you know, stakes and, you know, how action sequences are presented with Marvel, I just, I, I feel like... It's just scale being up for the sake of scale. Like, I never feel the drama. And it always looks like a lot of CGI is just thrown in there because, you know, it's a really, it's a strange world and they need it because it's a bunch about their stuff that's in a comic book that you can't make in real life and yada, yada, yada. Like, 
I, I, I don't know. Just maybe, I, I maybe I'm just getting bored with franchises in general. Because like I feel like that's just my attitude to every single like big budget summer movie. Now we get one pretty much every month. There's one released in March yeah. and in April, and it, it's I don't know. I'm, I I don't know. You you I feel are. Like uh huh. I feel like I'm like in a weird way I'm gravitating more towards like a bunch of foreign films and stuff like that's at the art house just because I need something smaller and more simpler. You you and know. I'm a, and I'm a fan of Michael Bay too, so that's to me in that's our lifetimes something. they're gonna reboot the MCU. It is going to happen. It's definitely gonna happen in the next like fifteen to twenty years, and everyone is gonna. I think I think like twenty years max. Just because they're gonna need a new Iron Man. Yeah, I don't doubt that it will be rebooted, but like honestly, this the way that we are like culturally is a place where we just keep on seeing you know comic book properties and a bunch of like franchises and sequels being released. Like I don't, it's it doesn't seem like it's it's not gonna be profitable forever. So how is that gonna not. work when we're gonna go back to original stuff? Like, or I mean, even with you know with TV, we're seeing a bunch of original stuff that's doing really, really well. And that's, if anything, that you know, that's the place where you want to see original content. And they managed to be pretty profitable with that without having to count on brand recognition. Um, well, it's not even brand recognition anymore. Like, yeah, most of these Marvel movies coming out in this third wave or a third phase, mo- the average film goer or comic book, quote unquote, fan doesn't even know the fuck they are. Like Black Panther... Ant Man, uh, Captain Marvel. These aren't triple A titles, and I mean neither was Iron Man for that matter, or Thor so, or Captain America. Uh, Thor, uh, Captain America, and Thor are on the upper echelon of Marvel heroes. I think Captain America is um, like as big I mean, as they go, besides you know, Spider Man. Yeah, but I think I mean back when the first installment of those movies came out, not many people knew who they were. It wasn't really until Avengers hit that they all got introduced to them. I mean. Ant Man, you know, it's doing fairly well now, but not ever not everyone really knows who Ant Man is or is gonna be interested in seeing it. I bet you it's not gonna be till Civil War happens that more and more people are gonna be interested in Ant Man. There's gonna be kids that are dressed up as Ant Man on Halloween. That won't be as big of a deal this year, but next year I'm sure it's yeah. gonna be a lot bigger. It's weird. We're in a, a weird time. I I hope we revert back to closer, more intimate stories. Kind of something like you know, uh, Paper Towns was. This is great summer movie, great end of the school year, end of high school movie that probably a lot of people aren't going to see. And, you know, also has that stigma kind of like Magic Mike where it's like, oh, that's for girls. You know, you go that onto that if it's a date. As one, it's one of those movies. It's perfectly fine. You know, it it's not exactly John Hughes caliber. Well, I mean, it, it is if you look at his huge his entire body of work. Um, but I think that's one of those films where it will be, you know, 15 years from now, it's going to be like, oh, that that's one of those. Like, I, in terms of the 90s, I consider, like, Can't Hardly Wait, Detroit Rock City, um, that She's All That. Like, those movies are, you know, my generation, or I guess our generation's John Hughes equivalents. Um, and I, I think that it definitely works oh, here, For the too. 90s? I think it's going to be good. Yeah. Well, not 90s, but like late 90s, when we were actually old enough to be able to classify our own films. I don't I mean, yeah, for, for me, it'd be different. Like, I, I'd, I'd pick the movies that I actually grew up with, like, while I was in high school. Something like Superbad. Yeah, well, like, to, you know, to me, even we're like though, on the... know, that's not very John Hughes-esque, but, like, yeah. there's, like, little scenes that's of that, that yeah, 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 yeah. there. And it's of a different time, and it's more of the time that I'm familiar with. Like for me, that's I, an important movie. Growing up, the, yeah, the, yeah, uh, that I'm thinking those are at the end of high school. You know, like Super Bad, I Love You, Man, stuff like that. Um, I don't know, just like those other films I just mentioned. They have like Bring It On. Like that has like a different place in my heart. Yeah, yeah, those are the kind of movies that I can watch over. Like I, I can also watch Super Bad over and over. I did, um, and I did, you know, watch it in high school and go out to the theater. But I, I think it was just the when I say John Hughes, it's like that feeling where it's on cable and you have to watch it, and you're at a certain age. Yeah, uh, there's a dazed and confused. That definitely was that for me. Yeah, we're a little too young for that, though. I think everyone was a little too young for that when it came out. 
Well, no, no, not in the '90s, but like you know, what that was uh, that was a movie that I just couldn't get enough of when I was in high school. It's a perfect high school movie. Yeah, you know, funny enough, like I mean, that's that movie was timed perfectly with the first time that I saw it, just because I literally saw it like the summer, like about a month before my junior year ended. I mean, not so much in the and, like for good, the... Yeah, for a good portion of like my life, like between junior and senior year, that was basically what I was doing. Not not like you know beating on like incoming freshmen, but you know just or driving around, like pigs. just driving around and doing shit. You poured paint just hanging on out. Batman once? No, 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 not the heavy overload <laughs> stuff. Just the simple like you know, hey, just you know, just driving around and kicking yeah. it, and you know, either get a beer or smoke some weed. That 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 was high school for you, a good portion of it for me. You know, Link that Later's was a great uh, fucking time. next film is supposed to be a spiritual success. I know, I can't wait for that. It's not, like, he's kind of withdrawn that, because he's like, it's a spiritual successor to both Boyhood and Days Confused, because it, it's about, like, it, it's like Days Confused in college, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, just... It's coming out soon. A college movie from Link Later, I'm already interested in. Just cause right, I, you know, I really love that. You know, just because Boyhood really almost goes way, there. It's just his laid back way of making movies. You know, it's some that's always identified with me, like with, with Days and Confused and Boyhood, and even you know, obviously the Before series, and then you know, maybe some out there stuff like Waking Life, which you know, I really. I mean, I, really I can't. Enjoy. That's part of the Before series, so uh, t- technically, I mean, technically, yeah. I mean, it. It's got a yeah. tie in there. Yeah. Love his shit. So this this isn't that related. I'm not even an X Files fan. Uh, did you watch the show? I saw the. the I only saw the movie. And okay, yeah, the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. So I only saw the movie. Um, but I did watch the spinoff, The Lone Gunman, and it's a real sad story. I told it a lot back in the day. Um, very unlike the show. I I wasn't into scary things back then. I, you know, as you know, I still really am not. Um, but this spinoff, it's about these like three characters that uh, Mulder and Scully kind of called in for assistance in certain cases. And so they got their own spinoff, which was kind of like a, a high spy type show. And I loved that show. I watched it religiously. Like every week, watched it, loved it. And then the the uh, season finale happened, and they there never was another episode. But I would sit there like every week going, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You know, like the days before the, the TV guide. Rather like the satellite guide, uh, and it, you know, years down the line, I figured out that it was canceled, and so they're gonna appear on this new event series that X Files is getting soon. Damn, I mean, what that's supposed to be coming back to Fox, right? Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, it, it is coming back to Fox. It's coming soon. I, they have like a countdown. It's a big deal. Like, uh, I, it's gonna be a hit. It's gonna be way bigger than the twenty four thing or NBC's Heroes Reborn. Like I think it's gonna be gigantic, especially since the entire show is on Netflix currently and they've been HDifying all the episodes. Uh, so it'll be a bigger hit than the last X Files movie. Which Definitely. tanked horribly. I didn't see that no, one. I, yeah. I didn't, but you know, I was too busy watching Dark Knight for like the fifteenth time that weekend. It was you know, it, it, they released that film too far from not only the first film but the show itself. Is it, I don't even know why they tried making a second film for an anthology series. It's just weird. But then again, they did the same thing for Tales from the Crypt, so... Nah, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't even... I hear that X-Files is really good, like the show. I don't know if I want to... I got so much stuff that I got to start. I d- like, it's a really long show. It's hard to get into a network show, you know, 22 episodes a season. There's like nine seasons. Yeah, and they're um, all pretty self-contained. Yeah, the, for the most part, they're self-contained, so there's not really a reason to watch everything. I I know there's lists online where it's like the X Files episodes you have to see, and you know it's the ones that kind of extend the story or they're really shot well. I know there's one that is about virtual reality uh, that's supposed to be really good, and there's one that um, is shot uh, like in, in one take, or like two, I think it's three. It's split up for the commercial breaks. Um, there's a couple others that are supposed to be really good. But I just remember watching it. Like, most of the episodes I saw in its initial run were the Monster of the Week stuff. So I was like, I don't give a shit. This is boring. So, I don't know. It's, it's for those people that believe in aliens or the cold or they're into Conspiracy the scary stuff. Conspiracy theorists and all that. All that. With the, you know, the the romantic angle between these agents and also, like, some kind of mystery going on. But, yeah, it's, it's a hard sell for me, too. I can't really get into something that long. For some reason, like, I can see that show being a bigger deal in the 90s, you know, especially with, like, the internet kind mm-hmm. of being up and coming at that point and, you know, just having, I, I don't know, I I don't know how to put this exactly, but 
uh, just, you know, as far as like, you know, fan bases getting together or just, I don't know, Googling, like seeing if any of these things in the show have any merit whatsoever. Or if it's just like, you know, totally fake. As, somehow, I, I feel like it's just, it's a show where, you know, we're much more cynical about this stuff now, but like, I, I think it would inspire well, more. That's more the thing about the show, though. Like There's. That. The two characters, Mulder is the conspiracy theorist who you know believes, and Scully is the the, uh, the cynic. cynic. Yeah, the hundred percent cynic was like Mulder, you're crazy, and that, so that's you know the thing that they got going. Plus their their will they won't they romance, which everyone knows it, they they do. Well, you know, so. yeah, in our current hate watching culture, I just don't see it being as big as a thing as uh, what the X Files was back then. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I don't know. I mean, the sci-fi fantasy stuff is definitely bigger now. I mean, look how big a hit The Walking Dead and uh, Game of Thrones and basically anything else that anyone talks about on TV. So, I mean, we, we just had like a 15-minute discussion about comic books, so. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I, I really, I don't know what the next thing is going to be, but I really feel like we're due for something, like, just to come out. So we're really waiting for, like, I'm just waiting on something that's like really going to set a mark on what I don't know this decade is supposed to be because to me a comic book movies that was last decade. Yeah, it was definitely last decade. And now this and is still... like yeah, and now this decade is where we're really milking it out well, even more. Well, this is kind of we talked about my script earlier and I you know we had this discussion before. I think men, women, children is that next thing. I think that is this generation and so was unfriended even though I haven't seen it yet where millennials are such a thing now that we are the main consumers of media and creators, for that matter, that we're due for stories about us. Because I, I still remember the first time I read a book where a character was using a smartphone, I was like, wait, 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 you can't do that. That's not allowed in novels. And now, if you're watching a movie and they don't use a smartphone, you're like, what fucking universe is this taking place in? It's not even realistic. Yeah, no, it's basically the norm. It is the norm because you know it's real. Yeah. Unless you know it takes place in some foreign country that they don't have satellite or uh, like cellular service yet. Yeah, you can't do a horror movie out in the middle of the woods, like unless you exactly. write that down the excuse of oh, you know, there's or no cell phone signal. There's no there's no service. And or it's even a then, piece. even then, that's not going to be that's going to be dated pretty soon. Like it'll be to a point where you can get service anywhere. You know, it's funny you brought up men, women, and children though, and there is. Like, a big part of that movie is that they send out, you know, which they also kind of brought up in uh, Pixels, coincidentally, that there's records... Oh, the satellite. Yeah, there's records of Earth's yeah. history in the 80s, and they send out the satellite Voyager in case alien life yeah, they did finds that. it. And, you know, I do feel like, as far as with movies, it seems like we're getting to a place where we're interested in more stories about space travel or just out of space. And not, I'm not talking about just stuff like... Interstellar, you know, there, there's also or the Martian. Yeah, there's also Gravity. Yeah, and the Martian, perfect example. And I can't remember. I think I saw this. Uh, I saw this. Uh, I think before the Pixel screening, it was like a University of Phoenix uh, promo of like you know, oh, you know, one of those things. Of, oh, you can get your education, get your dream job, and it ends with someone basically becoming an astronaut. And I do think some that I feel like is some to be excited about that I, me personally I'm excited about. I think there's more interest going back towards space, even if it's slowly getting there. I think I, I hope well, I mean, that SpaceX is, you know, they're doing as, great things. Yeah. As far as space exploration, like I, re, I, I, no, I, I mean, that, SpaceX, like, yeah. the company, yeah, no, I, Elon Musk. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're about to crack the reusable rocket thing. And once you can do that, then you can actually do interstellar travel for consumers because you know Richard Bronson has the Virgin Galactic like you can already buy the tickets so like, you can almost do that shit so it's only going to be so f long until Total Recall is a real thing you're going to be able to go to Mars like it's going to happen maybe not Mars in our lifetimes but definitely the moon I could see that shit happening like it's going to be fucking moon Vegas and you go up there and you're gonna, there's going to be a mall and it's all going to be 24-7 and you can get drunk and like go out in a hamster ball on the planet it's going to just be like Jurassic World I'm still going to hope on uh, Mars in our lifetime. I really, I would love to get off this planet, dude. I want I would to love get to, to the retire point. off this planet. I basically. want to watch Total Recall on the flight, or on the j voyage to Mars. That would be awesome. With your grandkid not, next to you? 
Yeah, not the Colin Farrell one, okay? Well, they don't even not go to that. Mars. Don't worry about it. I turned that... That's one of those rare movies where I turned it off. So... Yeah, it's, it's, you have to, it's it has to be though. pretty bad for me not to want to watch it. Like, this is how bad that is. I took a field trip to Deluxe in college with my editing class, and we were watching them Color Time Total Recall... And even that memory couldn't get me through watching it. So, because it looked good, but I didn't give a shit. Well, at least you learned. Like, this is a travesty. Well, you learned something about color timing through the remake of Total Recall, so there is, yeah. there is o- value o- there. Oh, for two. O oh, for two on studios remaking a Paul Verhoeven film. Let's hope they don't try to do Showgirls. Actually, I take that back. I would love to see that. <laughs> No, the, I, I mean, would yeah, love that. My final point there is, I guess, for movies anyway, I, I really hope that there's more stories, fictional stories about outer space, because that's, that's something to be, that's something I'd get excited about over all this uh, stuff from Marvel. I mean, hell, I'm, even though I don't consider Star Wars, you know, science fiction, that's a great space fantasy. Yeah, at least, it, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not much in space, but it is in a different galaxy, at least. But who knows? You know, that Star Wars and Star Trek are kind of the things that did spark our interest well i mean you also helped that we had astronauts at that time like actual astronauts just not people hanging out on international space station um but yeah you know sci-fi has always been the thing that's kind of sparked uh interest in uh it itself and then you also have the stuff where it's like technology in science fiction has fueled inventors to create science fact so i don't know cosmos was a big thing like I literally, ago. I have the Blu-ray sitting on my, like, mm-hmm. I'm looking at it right now. I still need to get to that. I don't know if you're going to like it. It's kind of aimed for kids. Like, there's, the stuff that isn't animated looks really good, but then it gets into, like, storybook time. It's like, this is Isaac Newton, and you got, like, a basic, like, biography episode, and it's 2D cell shaded uh, stuff. I don't, hey, I don't know, maybe. I, I don't know if you know this that much about me yet, but, like, if you haven't noticed through my film history, I'm a sucker for, like, almost anything set in space. Yo, well, that's what I'm saying. This isn't set in space, though. This is, you know, well, that you got... has to do with space. Like any any theory on maybe. that. Maybe like... I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll talk to you about once you get into Cosmos because I I watched about half the run and I went, eh, I'll 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 try to rewatch this again when it's on demand. So I was kind of over it at that point. Like the first episode was really good, and then after that, I was like, eh. well, you know, this might inspire me to get to it quicker. Maybe. Uh, I I got uh, one final thing to talk about. Well, first off, Top of the Lake Season 2 is happening. I don't know if you saw that first season. No. That, dude, you no. know me. I don't watch TV. I mean, probably well, it's short. the one the short. thing that I'm, of all the things that I know that are that are premiering right now, the thing I'm most likely to watch is the second season of Rick and Morty. Yeah, I, I've seen a couple episodes of that. I, I saw the original short, the Doc and Marty, and that was just like, what the fuck is this? And I got kind of mad a little bit. It's that entire it, it, show is it's just a whole series of what the fuck, but no, 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 you you misunderstand. The short wasn't Rick and Morty; it was Doc and Marty. Uh-huh. It was a Back to the Future 100 percent ripoff. It wasn't like, oh, look, they're kind of them. It was them, and it's it's just it, it's Doc Brown multiple times going, Marty, if you want me to save you, you gotta suck my balls. And I was like, what? I wasn't even watching it. Someone was watching on their phone in like the front seat, and I, I was kind of I wasn't disgusted, but I was ashamed that we got to that point. And then once I, I found out that they got like a TV show based on that show, I was like, oh no! But yeah, the, the episode totally or two that I've seen, thing, yeah. yeah, the episode or two I've seen are you know it's pretty funny stuff. Um, but yeah, Top of Lake season two, they're apparently uh, working on it right now. But I highly recommend it. Jane Champion uh, like wrote the whole show and she directed a couple episodes, and then it's. Um, Oh man, what's her name? Peggy from Mad Men. She's a star. Elizabeth Olsen. Yes, Elizabeth Olsen. I could also said West Wing, whatever. Everyone knows her from Mad Men. And it, it it's a really good mystery show. Really short. I think it's like six or seven episodes. About 40 minutes each. 50 minutes, I believe. Um, Really good. It's kind of like The Killing. I don't know if you've seen that. You probably haven't. The, the first season of The Killing is really fucking good. It's all on Netflix because Netflix created the fourth season. They brought it back from the dead the third time it got canceled two times before that uh but yeah that that's happening the thing that i wanted to uh end this podcast with because it you know it's not really something that we talk about but something that i really am interested in the fcc approved this week the merger of at&t and direct tv which is now the biggest uh television provider not just tv but just like 
everything provider, which is really scary. It's like kind of going back to AT and T's days as Monopoly. Like I, I don't know what's going to happen. They've put sanctions on what they have to do. Like they have to allow like certain bandwidth. Like there's restrictions on how slow they can make it, and uh, lots of technical points. Um, what's the biggest worry like, here? Because I'm not I'm not fully getting it. Because I don't, I don't have AT and T. Okay, well, it's not just a cable. AT&T is a phone provider, and they are the second biggest right behind Verizon. So the second biggest phone provider, who's also one of the biggest Internet providers, landline, everything, just acquired or merged with DirecTV, which is the biggest satellite TV provider. So now one company is one of the biggest TV, satellite, cable internet and telephone providers it's almost monopoly like you know there obviously is verizon and sprint and t-mobile but they're at a much lower place i mean you have you know time warner and you know comcast and whatever actually they just merged too um but it's like the only way that this can bounce out is if dish network actually merges with t-mobile that's been a thing that's kind of been a maybe for several years now, but I think they might have the kick in the pants now to actually actuate uh, that thing since it would make a true rivalry since they have similar technologies. But there's, like, really interesting technological stuff going on here because, like, DirecTV won, like, bandwidth, basically, so at and is going to have better service. It's really interesting. You should definitely look into it. It doesn't sound like you know much about this. I don't, no, that, no. Yeah, it's not something that you're interested in. No, no, it's just um, something I don't know about. Yeah, it, it, but it's it's definitely fascinating. Um, I don't know. It, like I said, it's not really related to this, but it could be because just in terms of, you know, it, like your cable literally, like it's, you know, underground. It only reaches certain places. Whereas if you have satellite, whether, you know, it's DirecTV or Dish Network, you can get service anywhere, not just on our planet, but, you know, anywhere as long as it's within reach of the satellite. So... That means that eventually, you know, satellite phones could be what everyone has. Like, it's not just a SIM. Like, they, they've realized that you can do electronic SIMs. Like, supposedly that's what the iPhone 6S is going to do, perhaps. Who knows? Um, I, I don't know. I, de- really, I definitely... Really interesting sci-fi stuff going on. I definitely don't think that's outside the realm of possibility. I mean, the world is getting a lot smaller. I mean, you're gonna, you can watch live TV through the Internet now, so... I don't know, I think the next couple of years, I mean, we talked about this last week with VR. It's just stuff that, that really excites me. I mean, you know, you're, you're excited about space exploration, and that's all, you know, it's tied together, because the better technology we have on our planet means the better technology we're going to have To off push of forward, it. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's an exciting time and a scary time. Cause, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to also worry about, but... That that would be a whole different like political conversation <laughs> if you want to get into that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think we covered just about everything we could. I think we got more so in the end there. That's good. Yeah. So if if you liked anything we said, or especially if you hated it, we'd love some feedback. Please send us an email at dollar dot review at gmail dot com. If you're too afraid to use that and you like snail mail, we can't help you. We're not going to give you our address, but you could send us uh, some tweets. Or, you know, interact with us on Letterboxd. If you listen to any of our stuff, you, you know what our handles are. Honestly, and I I really want some Bollywood re- film recommendations, guys. Somebody, please, if you're listening. like You, you could watch Ghost World and watch the come scenes on. from that. Thanks for listening.